Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back today to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're looking at wheel bearings. So, we're going to be looking at the failure of the Mark V or B6 platform wheel bearings, as well as Tiguan and a bunch of other Volkswagens, but what we're going to talk about today actually applies to almost every wheel bearing. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great prices, a ton of great DIY videos. Check them out at shopdap.com. And as always, I'll put a link in the show notes for you guys. All right, so what the heck is a wheel bearing? Well, just like its name, it's a bearing pack for the wheel. It allows for smooth, quiet rotation of the wheel, and some even have an ABS ring built into the back of them. But how does it work? Well, inside of this housing is actually a series of ball bearings you can see here. As the wheel rotates, these ball bearings rotate inside of a race. They're also caged and greased. Again, for a nice, quiet, smooth rotation of the wheel. It's one of those parts that I think everybody has always heard of, but very rarely do you get to see the guts. And again, this is only one kind of wheel bearing. There's a bunch of different kind of wheel bearings. Um, some are pressing, like the older Volkswagens. Some are needle bearing, like my Cabrio's rear drum. So this is just, again, one style. But the big question is, is how do they fail? Typically what can happen is one of three or four different failures. We can get a failure in any one of these little ball bearings inside on either side. There's an inner and an outer pack of ball bearings. So you could have a flat spot or a broken ball inside of either one of these bearing packs. Also the race that connects all of these ball bearings and holds them in place could break. You could have damage on the other side to the race where the ball bearings ride. You could have a bad spot inside the speed sensor ring. You could get moisture inside and cause this to rust. And probably like a million and a half different other failures. Um, impact damage I've seen destroy these wheel bearings. But for the most part, it's damage to the ball bearings, damage to the race, or damage to the ABS ring. I actually had a Beetle with like 2,000 miles where this uh, magnetic ring had a weak spot in it. And it was tripping wheel speed sensor faults. So, how do we know we might have a bad wheel bearing? The most common symptom of a bad wheel bearing is going to be noise. And these noises are usually speed dependent. I've had some really, really weird noises from wheel bearings over the years. I had one that it was a left rear wheel bearing where it was quiet as could be until you hit 27 miles per hour. And then it sounded like there was a helicopter in the trunk. I've also had some where you really couldn't tell whether it was the left or the right side. It sounded like either the whole front or the whole rear of the vehicle was making noise. The car that this bearing came out of actually sounded like it had bad tire noise, but it wound up being the bearing. I actually got a little video and audio of this exact bearing's failure that you'll check out now. Man, when this car came in was one of those days where I really wish I had my GoPro with me. So how do we diagnose these failures? Well, a lot like we did when we were diagnosing a failed CV joint, we're gonna load the car up, which means we're gonna take the wheel and we're gonna turn it hard left or turn it hard right at the speed where the car's making the noise. And as we load the vehicle, the noise should generally change. Not always, but most of the time it'll change. So if we load the car and turn right, we're actually loading the left side of the vehicle. If it's a left wheel bearing, generally it'll get louder when you turn right. If it's a right wheel bearing, generally it'll get louder when you turn left. But that is all dependent on how the wheel bearings failed. I've had some of these where they didn't change at all, or they actually got louder when you loaded up the other side. Another really good way is with the vehicle up in the air, where you're driving it on a lift, supported safely of course, and listening to it right at the contact point. So like for this one, I would have put maybe a stethoscope right here on the bearing, and it would have been considerably louder than the other side. When diagnosing wheel bearings, it's also a good idea to have something like chassis ears or a second technician to sit in different spots of the vehicle. Noise really does travel very strangely inside a car. So while to the driver, it may sound like a left front wheel bearing, someone sitting in the back seat, it can actually sound like a left rear or even a right rear bearing. So having a second tech with you to listen to this noise is always a good choice when diagnosing wheel bearings. You can also do a test with the car up in the air and rotating the wheel by hand. That's what I did with this one. Part of the problem is with that audio that you just listened to is you don't get to feel the bearing in your hand. 
It feels notchy, like you can almost feel a ball bearing has a flat spot in it as you rotate it around. It's not the smooth rotation like a brand new bearing would have. As far as normal time to failure, it really depends. Again, that beetle I mentioned a while back with the failed ABS ring, it only had a few thousand miles. My car's got 140 on it, and I've never replaced a wheel bearing, so it really all depends. Is it a DIY or not? Well, it is actually, especially these are really easy to replace because they just bolt right in. The one thing is, is you will need a torque wrench because they are torqued to yield bolts, which means you torque it to a certain amount, and that'll actually stretch the bolt into place. The older ones, like my Passat, which is a 2005, are press-ins, so you can't just bolt it in. You actually have to have a shop press or some other apparatus to press the bearing in and out. You may also need something like a triple square or a 12-point socket or a 17 millimeter Allen like my Passat. It really all depends on the setup. I'll put a link in the show notes to the tools that I use to replace these wheel bearings. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, humblemechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, and just checked on Instagram. Apparently, the Jetta All Track is definitely coming as a 2016 model. I should have done a whole video about that. I'm so excited. All right, guys, thanks.